Hello and welcome to South Asia Today, a show that provides you the glimpses of South Asia. I'm your host, Shivangi Mishra. Let's begin with the headlines first. Srinagar exhibition portrays different shades of fall season in Kashmir Valley. Frequent load shedding disrupts life in Gilgit, Baltistan. And India's Orissa State hosts Konak Dance Festival and International Sand Art Festival. Let's begin the show. An army's role around the world is to protect its country from perceived and actual threats and to ensure national security. In Pakistan, however, the army functions as the mafia with corruption and extortion rampant its ranks. With a dubious record of toppling elected governments, installing puppet dictators and plundering the country's resources to fund the lavish lifestyles of the generals. The Pakistani army is truly unique in its functioning. Most recently, General Kamar Javed Bajwa has come under fire for what many are calling a questionable accumulation of wealth, while he was the head of the Pakistani army. Let's take a closer look at the fabulous lives of the fat cat generals of the Pakistani army and their utter disdain for a population that struggles to make their ends meet. A recent investigative report by the website Fact Focus out of Pakistan revealed Pakistani Army General Kumar Javed Bajwa and families suspect financial and tax information. The report raises many questions as to the Bajwa family's disproportionate accumulation of wealth during the general's tenure as army chief and to the army's financial transactions in general. In an ironic twist, Pakistan, instead of vowing to investigate the Bajwa's financial situation, has ordered an investigation into what they call the illegal and unwarranted leakage of the family's tax information. And now, with Bajwa's blue-eyed boy Munir taking over, it will be business as usual, with no heads rolling for the rampant corruption plaguing the Pakistani army. Financial mishandling, corruption, and influence peddling by generals for personal gain has been the subject of several scandals in Pakistan. At the beginning of this year, data leaked from Credit Suisse an investment banking firm registered in Switzerland, revealed information about 600 accounts linked to 1,400 Pakistani citizens. Account holders included several key politicians and generals, including the ex-ISI chief, General Akhtar Abdur Rahman Khan. Exposure like this coming out is nothing new. Uh, it, it has been well known for long. We also know of a case of a Pakistani general who fled from Pakistan and he opened a chain of uh, uh, you know, pizza huts in US. So it's nothing new. It is because the connect of the Pakistan army is not there with its general citizens that uh, you know, uh, it has been allowed to get away with all these crimes that it has been doing. There's no one to check them whether politically or uh, you know, from the media because they're the most powerful entity in Pakistan. One of the Pakistani army's biggest scandals remains its appropriation and sale of land in the name of welfare and providing housing for its officer cadre. On August 27, 2016, an article titled Lust for Land was published in the Pakistani newspaper Dawn. In the article, Pakistani freelance columnist and former civil servant, Irfan Hussein, exposed the reality of multiplying defense societies and the Pakistani army's insatiable hunger for land. Several other reports from Pakistan have claimed that the Pakistani army is using government land to fulfill commercial interests. The army has built shopping malls, cinema halls, and marriage halls on government land. The military appears to have interests in many land and commercial entities, ranging from petrol pumps to huge industrial plants. Money earned by rentals of these properties is being given to the families of army officers. In Pakistan, 
Many petitions have also been filed over the failure to implement laws to protect lands from the military mafia. Though the Supreme Court of Pakistan has criticized the military establishment in the past for their involvement in commercial pursuits, the practice continues. While Pakistan has descended into a deep economic crisis, military officers have been given taxpayer-funded land allocations worth millions. Well, the fact that today Pakistan is on the brink of, uh, you know, uh, being declared a bankrupt nation, they have just no money with them. We have seen the recent floods which came in which one third of Pakistan was under water. Now, at that time also, the Pakistan army got a raise of 9% in the salaries. Can you imagine? Pakistan recently ranked 140th out of 180 countries on the Corruption Perception Index 2021 by Transparency International, dropping 16 spots from the previous year. In Pakistan, corruption is so ingrained within the military that it seems unlikely that the appointment of a new general or even of new political leadership will be able to change the functioning of the country's most powerful institution. As Pakistan descends deeper into economic and political instability, the army's top leaders continue to enjoy an enrichment of power and finances. The Kashmir Valley has been thriving a center of intellectual activities because of being a melange of different religions and communities that has influenced the region's art and craft. The fall season in the Kashmir is a beautiful sight to watch as the entire valley gets covered in a blanket of crimson and gold. Putting forward this beautiful view in the form of paintings, a three-day painting show named Autumn Art Exhibit was organized in Srinagar city. Take a look. A three-day painting show called Autumn Art Exhibit at the Arts Emporium Abdullah Bridge was recently organized in Srinagar city of Jammu and Kashmir with the goal of introducing young people to folk art. During this exhibition, various paintings including fusion, three-dimensional art, watercolors and others were on display made by a famous artist named Deepa Soni. Sony, through her artworks, showcased the enchanting beauty of autumn in Kashmir Valley, which caught a lot of eyeballs. Kashmir was like a dream place for me, and since one year I'm staying here. So um, Kashmir is like a very, um, you know, for an artist it's like a dream place to be because it's surrounded by, uh, you know, such positive vibes and creativity all around. I would say creativity is in the air in Kashmir. So it was like my dream place to be here. You are seeing in this hall mein jitni bhi paintings hai, that is exclusively done by me only. Mm -hmm. And I am showing different uh, aspects of Kashmir. Like, बच्चे आप पीछे देखेंगे कि पीछे की कुछ पेंटिंग में काफी बच्चे बच्चों का मैंने काफी सारे फोटोग्राफीज और उससे इंस्पायर होके पेंटिंग्स की हैं दैट इज द ग्रोइंग फियरलेस कश्मीर while folk art holds its own importance the younger generation in the union territory has started being captivated by dimensional paintings and modern art the goal of such programs is to encourage folk art forms that would connect young generations to the foundations of their culture and heritage. The three-day exhibition featured a variety of paintings which aimed to propagate art through various forms and mediums. So I think this is one of a kind here for the first time I'm seeing because here I have seen it through art. वर्ड तो बहुत बारी सुना है आप क्राफ्ट में देखेंगे आप टेक्सटाइल्स में देखेंगे बट थ्रू आर्ट किसी की पर्सपेक्टिव ऑन ऑटम और ऑन कश्मीर मैंने पहली बारी देखी है सो दैट इज़ वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड आप ये एग्जिबिशन में आल्सो द आर्ट पीसेज आर वेरी यूनिक दे आर नॉट लाइक रिलीजन या ऐसे कुछ पॉइंट्स पर नहीं है दे आर थ्रू द यू नो द इनोसेंस ऑफ ह्यूमैनिटी तो आप देखोगे छोटे बच्चों की पोर्ट्रेट्स हैं लेडीज की पोर्ट्रेट्स हैं झरोखे से झाँकते हुए हैं थोड़ा सेंट्रल एशियन टच दिखेगा आपको सो आई थिंक कल्चरली इन्हेंस कर रहा है एंड ऑटम जो अभी सीजन है उसके थ्रू आई थिंक एक अच्छा सा विजुअल सॉर्ट ऑफ और क्रिएट हो रहा है 
The autumn art display drew many art enthusiasts from different parts of the country to Kashmir. Many young people, especially students, attended this exhibition and they feel that these kinds of exhibitions are playing a significant role in helping them find peace of mind and lower their stress levels, which are prevalent among them due to the demanding study schedule. इस टाइम ये एक तो आटम है ही है और आटम में ऑफ कोर्स लोग दूर दूर से यहाँ आते हैं आटम को देखने के लिए और आटम न सिर्फ फोटोग्राफी का एक इम्पॉर्टेंट जुज़ है कश्मीर का बल्कि पेंटिंग्स में और हैंडीक्राफ्ट्स में भी है आप देखते हैं कि चिनार मोटिव्स का कितना यूज़ होता है चाहे वो पेपर मैशे हो चाहे वो हमारे शॉल्स हों या कारपेट्स हो तो कहीं ना कहीं जो हमारा फ्लोरा है इस्पेशली चिनार और हैंडीक्राफ्ट्स का चोली दामन का साथ रहा है और मुख्तलि फनकारों ने इसको मुख्तलि शक्ल शक्ल दी है तो ये आज की भी ये जो एग्जीबिशन है ये आटम को ही डेडिकेट है Experimenting with several techniques and shapes to create a diverse body of work that reflects both classic and contemporary art has become the painting style of many artists. It is artists like Deepa Soni that not only mix conventional folk art with modern art but also promote and inspire youngsters to create new forms of art and craft. Now let's take a look at a few happenings in Asia in a segment called Asia Watch. In Biban village of Ninevo, Iraq artist Faris Bibani spends his days painting murals to revive Yazidi heritage and decorate his town. The murals represent the ancient heritage of the villagers and the farming life they used to live. In the main square where religious ceremonies and wedding parties are held, several walls have been painted. The aim of the project, the 55-year-old artist said, is to inform new generations of their heritage. Some of Bibani's paintings depict what a UN-appointed commission of independent war crimes investigators said was genocide against the Yazidis, a religious community of 4 lakh people in northern Iraq. beginning with an attack on their city of Sinjar on August 3, 2014 by the Islamic State. Thousands of Yazidis were killed, held captive by Islamic State and many were used for sexual slavery or forced to fight for the group. Bibani started his project in March 2022 and says he will continue to paint until he decorates the entire village. Exiled Tibetans in India's northern hill town of Dharmshala staged a protest to criticize China for introducing a zero covid policy. Tibetan activists gathered to express their solidarity with the Tibetans and Chinese people in China who have been under strict covid-19 quarantine protocols which had fueled widespread protest over the world's toughest curbs. Protesters demonstrated with blank paper symbolizing the absence of freedom of speech and raised slogans to condemn the Chinese rule as they believe they were misusing covid protocols to crush their cultural identity in China. For nearly 3 years China has managed covid as a disease on par with bubonic plague and cholera and as cases spread earlier this year whole communities were locked down sometimes for months. However, China recently announced the most sweeping changes to its resolute anti-covid regime since the pandemic began 3 years ago, loosening rules that curbed the spread of virus but sparked protest and hobbled the world's second largest economy. The relaxation of rules which includes allowing infected people with mild symptoms to quarantine at home and dropping testing for people traveling domestically is the clearest sign yet Beijing is pivoting away from its zero covid policy to let people live with the disease Tokyo Metropolitan Government in Japan has been operating a new subway train on the Mita line since May The Mita line runs from north to south in Tokyo a number of locals commute on the local trains every day and the number of commuters is constantly increasing year by year the train currently has 6 cars 
that were launched around 30 years ago. In order to fulfill the increasing number of passengers and ensure comfortable transportation, the Tokyo Metropolitan Department has decided to launch an 8-car subway train with modern designs and facilities. The new subway train is designed based on the policies of convenience, hospitality and safety. To accommodate the growing number of inbound tourists, there is hospitality for foreigners. The electronics guide board has four languages. CCTV is also installed to keep passengers safe. The ticket vending machine has sign in English, Chinese, Korean, Thai, Spanish and so on. Passengers can get information on the train timetable, arrival time and location of the train. Also, smartphone holders can get a memorable stamp at each station. By reading the QR code, passengers can collect stamps that designate each station. The Tokyo Metropolitan Department is constantly improving its facilities to improve the lives of its citizens. It is the reason why Tokyo is continuously progressing and is one of the most developed cities in the world. Japan's largest IoT Internet of Things exhibition, CATEC 2022, was recently organized with top manufacturers from all around the country participating in it and showcasing their latest technology. Fujitsu is leading Japanese firm that manufactures electronics. In 2021, Fujitsu announced a new business brand titled Fujitsu Uwans, which is the solution of making a better impact on the environment, society and economy by transforming its business. Fujitsu contributed to the world's first 3D sensing AI technology in sports and developed a gymnastics scoring system in collaboration with the International Gymnastics Federation. Fujitsu uses these technologies for well-being. The avatar in the mirror serves the customer. AGC has developed a technology that can express avatars and various video contents using a special mirror. AGC is one of the world's largest glass manufacturers and is known as a producer of materials, new products that mix materials using the latest technology such as glass for 5G antennas. These products that are being developed with the help of the latest technologies are improving the lives of people and are helpful in solving all kinds of social problems. For more than 70 years, Pakistan has illegally occupied the Gilgit Baltistan region and violently plundered its natural resources. Islamabad has been utilizing the water resources of Gilgit Baltistan and generating power for its own consumption. Unfortunately, the people in the Gilgit Baltistan are facing frequent power cuts, especially during the harsh winter season. We have a report. Despite the fact that Gilgit Baltistan has a number of power plants because of steady supply of rivers and rainwater, local authorities have failed to provide adequate electricity to indigenous people. Locals claim that the region has very little electricity consumption, but they still experience frequent and long power outages. Residents have been subjected to daily load shedding for six to eight hours, making their lives miserable. बिजली दो तीन घंटा आता है बस इसमें बहुत मसला है इधर अभी तो इधर फीजर आ नहीं करते है लेकिन जुर्माना तीन चार हजार लगे की जाते है बस एक दो पांच सौ हजार मजरू होता है इससे भी ज्यादा लेग की जाते है Most villages and towns of the Gilgit Baltistan region have 18 hours of load shedding which has been in effect for the past years the Power and Works Department is in charge of supplying electricity to the municipality. The difficulties that the people confront do not appear to affect the government in the least. Many people are affected by the government's unresponsiveness. The region has become the most neglected and backward region 
because neither the government nor the authorities are interested in its development. एक तो बिजली है ही नहीं है इधर इधर का पता नहीं आ रही अवसर एक्सेंट क्या कर रहा है कुछ पता नहीं चलता है इधर का बिजली बिल्कुल है ही नहीं है बिजली बिल्कुल नहीं है रात को ज़्यादा ज़्यादा एक घंटा आता है दिन में ज़्यादा ज़्यादा एक घंटा आता है बिल्कुल ना होने के बराबर है बहुत मुश्किल है हमारे इधर गांछे में बिजली का इन गिलगित बल्तिस्तान दर इज अवियर लैक ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बिजनेस स्कूल एंड अदर हेल्थ केयर फेसिलिटीज are disrupted by frequent power outages residents lament the worsening electricity crisis has affected more than just one aspect of their lives it has taken a massive toll on people's health and employment too while on one side pakistan has brought down the power generation capacity of gilgit baltistan the demand has spiked up problems are just appearing to be growing by the day with no apparent solution in sight now we will take you to orissa india's hub of art culture and dance every year a number of music and dance festivals are organized in the state to celebrate the spirit of classical arts this year the 33rd edition of the kornak dance festival alongside the famous international sand art festival was organized in orissa's puri city dekta with colorful lights and glittery artistic pieces the way to the exquisite open air auditorium situated in a backdrop of konark sun temple was casting a magical spell on visitors popularly known as natya mandir The auditorium is famous for playing host to the famous Konark Dance Festival every year. Jointly organized by Odisha Tourism and Odissi Research Center since 1989, the 5-day cultural extravaganza aims to boost tourism in Konark along with preserving and increasing the reach of Indian folk dance forms. This year, the 33rd edition of the Magnificent Dance Festival was organized with great zeal. This is a wonderful function, a international function par excellence. Today, you must have seen two excellent shows. One, which was performed by a team from Malaysia, which performed Odissi dance, which is the dance from Odisha, and the other dance was a group from Delhi, which performed the Kathak dance. Multi parties are coming to this particular point, and with the backdrop of Konark, the Sun God's temple, it is simply fabulous. Dancers from across the world. they come to this particular stage they like this stage because the stage is different the event saw some of the most mesmerizing choreographies in classical dance forms of india like odissi kathak bharatnatyam and others a spell binding odissi dance performance was presented by the tukramli ibrahim and sutra foundation from malaysia the group presented a dance number titled jaya ram which is an homage to lord ram the protagonist of ramayana another performance that garnered a lot of praise was a kathak dance performance by rajendra gangani and dancers from guru kundan lal gangani foundations from new delhi The title of their performance was Chand Laya Gati. We specialize in Odissi. I have brought my troupe here of 22 artists together with the lighting designer to present a new work called Jaya Ram which was premiered in Kuala Lumpur. This work is collaborated with uh, an Odissi guru, uh, Guru Gajendra Kumar Panda. Both of us have been working together for a very long time for almost 40 years. We share the same guru in the form of the pioneer Odissi guru. Alongside Konark Dance Festival, the International Sand Art Festival also captured attention of the audiences at Chandrabhaga Beach in Puri. 
more than 100 sand artists from different places in India and countries like Japan, Canada, Spain and Russia participated in this year's event. Renowned sand artist and Padam Shri awarded Sudarshan Patnaik is the ambassador of the festival ever since its inception. To mark the occasion, this year Patnaik created the logo of India's G20 presidency on the sand with Vasudev Kutumbakam written on it. I have created the sand sculpture which is around 20 tons of sand I have used and I have made this sculpture of the logo which is specially created uh, for the G20. In these many years, both the Kunak Festival as well as International Sand Art Festival have carved out a niche of their own in the country's annual carnival calendar by providing a wonderful opportunity for budding artists to make their presence felt in the international performing arts arena. It's time for me to wrap up today's episode. We'll be back next week at the same time. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of South Asia today. Goodbye and take care.